seven years. Last week, I was talking to an author, and that's how long he's been working on planning his novel. There's this constant struggle that every writer feels between the pantser and the plotting methodology. So we have the pantser who just wants to sit down and write and the plotter who wants to actually plan out the story. And if you have been planning your story for seven years, it's like you're a plotter who just got stuck in that cycle like a record skipping over and over and over. So if this is you What's actually going on here and how can you break out of this cycle and actually get to the point where you write the book? So that's what I'm going to share in this video. The one thing you should be doing instead of planning your novel and the four steps to actually put this in practice so that you get to the point where you can actually write it. My name is Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid and I'm the author of Running Down a Dream, The Threshing, and Your First 1000 Copies. My partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid and everything I teach in this and all our videos is based on his extensive research and experience over 30 years writing and editing. I could sit you in a classroom with the acclaimed astrophysicist and science communicator Neil deGrasse Tyson, and I could have him explain all of the physics and everything around how a bicycle works. And you could spend six days in the classroom just going through and learning all the physics about how riding a bicycle works. And yet, when you first get on that bicycle, you're gonna fall off. Because there's this idea of conceptual and theoretical learning. This relies on lectures and reading and analyzing. And obviously, this is an important part of learning. This is what we do here on this channel at StoryGrid. The problem is when you get stuck in that space and you think, Oh, if I just can learn a little bit more, if I just understand a little bit better, if I can just read another book or analyze a little bit more, then I'm going to get to this magical point where I'm going to feel ready. And again, back to that analogy of the bicycle, no matter how much you learn, at some point, you're going to have to actually get on the bike and start trying to pedal and fall off and then try again. And that's where we come to experiential learning. And this is a thing that people don't understand about writing is you can't think yourself into it. You can't conceptualize or theorize yourself into knowing how to do it. You actually have to sit down and start doing it. And so once you've reached a certain level, you've got to actually write. And I get why people do this. I've gotten caught in this trap too, because it's scary to actually get on the bike and start riding the bike because you might fall off and hurt yourself. And as a writer, we might actually find out, oh, we suck at this and we're a big fake phony that doesn't actually know how to write. And this idea for this story I had doesn't actually work. And then what does that mean? Because I've wasted all my time and now I'm never gonna have this dream of having my book out in the world. And here we go, we're exhausted. And then we just go back and think, okay, I'm just gonna plan a little bit more, read a little bit more, and then I'll be ready at some magical time in the future. And I think the problem here is that we build this thing up as if we're going to plan this giant, huge thing, and then we're just going to set out and do this giant, huge thing. And again, that's not how it should work. We should actually start with something small and something simple. So how do you break out of this cycle of plotting and plotting and planning and planning and actually start writing? The number one first thing to do is break our problem down into a much smaller problem. So we're not going to set out and write a giant manuscript and get it all down. We're just going to start with one scene or one short story, less than 2000 words, and just practice those 2000 words. What's great about this is that if you can write one scene, then you can write the next one. And a book is just a collection of lots of scenes in a row. And so you're breaking this down into a problem you can actually practice and it's getting you towards your bigger goal of eventually writing the entire book. Plus, if you fail, it's not a big deal because it didn't take you that long to write a 2000 word scene versus a 200,000 word novel. So that's the first step is just take this giant idea of a manuscript in your head and just break it down into a really small problem of just writing one scene, which then leads me to step two, which is just to think of this as practice. And when you're practicing, it doesn't actually matter what you produce. You're just doing it to get better at a skill. And that's what we think you should be doing is when you're writing these scenes, don't think about like, oh, this scene has to work for my book. 
In fact, we tell people, don't work on your work in progress. Just make up something for this one scene. Write fan fiction. This is what fan fiction is great for because you have established worlds and characters that you can write in and you're just practicing writing a single scene. So see it as practice where you're getting better at a skill and not trying to set out to write this whole manuscript on your first try. The third step is to get feedback on your scene writing. Now, I understand this can be hard to do, but it's so important because writing is notoriously hard to self-evaluate. It's hard to know that you're doing it right. So we have lots of stuff here on this channel walking you through what your scene should look like so you can try to get some evaluation, maybe work with somebody else who has gone through these videos. We also have lots of ways to get one-on-one -on -one feedback at storygrid.com, but you really need to get feedback on your writing so you can see what you're doing right, what you're doing wrong, and how you can actually get better. So that's the third step is to get feedback. And then the fourth step is to start building up from that one scene. So first, you're just trying to write one scene that works really, really well. Once you're able to write one great scene, then build towards writing a short story and then build up towards a novella. And then you can actually set out to write a full novel. But you start with this idea of, I just need to learn to write one great scene, and then I can start building from there into my full scope of my project that I've been planning for so long. At StoryGrid, we are not panthers. We do not think that you should just sit down with some random idea for your book and just start writing and hoping it turns into something. We have an entire methodology for planning out your novel, but first you have to be able to write a great scene and if that planning is keeping you from writing, then it's not being helpful anymore. And so that's why you need to start small, start with just writing one scene, get good at that and build from there. To actually learn writing, it is experiential learning. You have to sit down and write and try and then get better over time and build up your skill set. That is how you're going to get better at writing. You can't just think your way into it. But of course, understanding the theoretical and the conceptual is important, which is why we continue to put out these videos at storygrid.com and here on this channel. So make sure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that bell so you don't miss anything that we do here at StoryGrid. And of course, make sure you go to storygrid.com, sign up for the newsletter, check out all our free resources. We want to help you as you continue on this journey. And as you break out of this cycle of just plotting and plotting and plotting, and actually figuring out how to build the skills as a writer. But as always, thanks for being a writer. Thanks for being a part of our community here at StoryGrid, and I'll see you next time.